Good afternoon. I'm going to thank you all for being here. We'll read the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provision of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Have you consideration of the minutes? Have you all had an opportunity to read those? Is there a motion for? Is there any discussion over the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Metro Council referrals. Are there any referrals from council members? No. No. Thank you so much. Moving to old business, 09-15-03, Ms. Paula Casey, President, and Ms. Yvonne Wood, Secretary of the Tennessee Women's Suffrage Monument Board, request board approval to place the Women's Suffrage Monument in Centennial Park. Is there a report from staff or a recommendation? Tim. So several years ago, the Park Board approved um, uh, putting the Women's Suffrage Monument in uh, Centennial Park. Um, it also went through the Metro Arts Department of the uh, Commission's um, donated art process. At that time, they pr pr approved uh, conditionally the installation of the art, and it has since gone through their final approval process. So this agreement is the result of a coordinated effort by uh, the Women's Suffrage Organization, the Arts Commission, and Metro Parks <coughs> staff. And, uh, essentially finalizes all of the agreements and approvals necessary for, <coughs> uh, for the monument with, with I believe I believe council approval is still required uh, Van Maravelli is here from the Arts Commission if you have any other specific questions about the terms as our representatives from the women's suffrage organization are there any questions from the board I'll accept a motion with the motion for approval second all those in favor uh, aye Thank you, and I believe Ms. Javon Wood wanted to make a comment to the board. <coughs> Good morning, Madam Chair and board members. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you just a minute. Um, August has been a very significant month in Tennessee related to woman suffrage. It was August 18, 1920, when the Tennessee legislature voted to ratify the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that would deliver women in our nation the right to vote. The bill then was signed into law by Tennessee Governor A.H. Roberts on August 24th, 1920. On August 24th this year, we're inviting you to join us at the monument site, its temporary site, to celebrate the 99 year anniversary of women's right to vote. And I did lay a, a, an announcement at your places and so it is my hope that uh, you uh, have an hour to give us on August 24th and can be with us. So it would follow that today, August 6th, you have voted to complete the request to place the monument in Centennial Park at a site that can be seen by the masses that was initially accepted by you with contingencies November 3rd of 2015. It has been an unforeseen but an essential journey began in 2012 with nine dedicated, hardworking women from across the state who make up the Tennessee Woman Suffrage Monument Board. And we're very honored today to have two of them with us and one who's trying very hard to get here from Harriman, Tennessee and has been stopped by, she says, at least two wrecks. Uh, but we have Alma Sanford and Janice Santaney from Nashville here. And Pat Pierce is the lady who is trying to join us from Harriman. So we want to give our sincerest thanks to all the Metro Park staff that we have worked with. They have been just great, good people to work with through the years. And also we want to express our thanks to former Parks Director Tommy Lynch, current Assistant Director Tim Nage, and especially Parks Director Monique Odom for being always available to provide guidance whenever we requested. And to Janet Frazier, who has always been so kind to help me find Tim and Monique or whoever else we <laughs> might. <laughs> 
<laughs> can't get by without that. And finally, and most importantly, thanks to you, Madam Chair, and to all of the Metro Parks Board members who so generously give of your time to public service for the good of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 07-19-06, Mr. David Prophet, representing Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools, requests board approval of agreement for dedication <clears throat> of a 10-foot drainage easement and an agreement for dedication of easement for temporary grading and sloping to Belmont University for construction of an indoor batting facility to be constructed on Metro Nashville Schools property. Acquisition committee report, please. We met and recommend approval to the board. Thank you so much. <coughs> Uh, are there any other questions from the board? Make a motion for approval. Thank you so much. Second. Yes, Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. It's been passed. <coughs> we'll move now to our consent agenda 08-19-01. Board approval requested to the following consent applications. We can take those all at the same time to accept a, a, a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, I make a motion for approval. Second. Thank you so much. Been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you so much. Uh, new business 08 19 02. Mr. Mark Manor requests the board to accept a donation of sculpture valued at $42,000 to be placed at Bells Bend Nature Center at no cost to Metro Park. I believe we need a recommendation for approval from the Arts Commission. Uh, we are going to defer this. We need to work with the Arts Commission and go through the Arts <coughs> Commission process, and then we will be bringing it back to the board. So we're okay. deferral until. So we need a recommendation for deferral. So moved. Is there a second? No. All those in favor? No. Aye. Any opposed? What is the timeline for that? Six months. About six months. What's Say optimistically six months. <laughs> okay. Uh, we may have to go through council given the monetary amount. Right. Okay. But we'll work with staff um, to finalize that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. 08 19 03. Mr. Martin Brown requests the board to accept a donation <coughs> in kind in the amount of $50,000 for design and illustration of signage, tree identification fabrication, replacement panels, and installation on the Betty Brown Tree Trail in River in Riverfront Park. Is there a staff recommendation? Yeah. Staff approved. It's, um, the new signage is very consistent with the signage there now. Um, what's improved is there's a nice sign that honors Miss Betty Brown and her contributions to the city and the urban forestry um, program, as well as there's some educational components and new tree markers there that describe all the trees that are planted in the park. So it could be a really good opportunity for field trips for students. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an enhancement. Also increases, improves the wayfinding. There was some confusion in the past in terms of the trail. So the new signage enhances the wayfinding to where it, when, it's, when the park is fully open, it has an entire route. And then when the, it's closed for the concert, it shows a, a separate route to where they, people can still see the trail <clears throat> that's available to the public. That's not that we're part of it. It's closed off during the concert. So, but it's it's definitely an improvement. Very nice. Thank you. Is there a second? So probably <coughs> all those in favor. Um, I'm recusing myself on that vote. Susanna had to recuse herself. Thank you so much. Thank you. 08-19-04, Mr. Tim Friedenberger, representing the Nashville Predators, requests the board to, improve, to approve improvement valued at $49,525.37 to four locker rooms at the Centennial Sports Flex ice facility. Is there a staff recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is work that we've been working with the maintenance division to get accomplished. Uh, it's like Christmas in July when they said, hey, we'll come do it for you. So we said, please do. Um, uh, this is, there's eight locker rooms. This takes care of half the work that needs to be done. Uh, work maintenance <coughs> is in favor of everything that you're doing, and we're very pleased. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? I, I have a question. Is the, um, are these locker rooms accessible to the public, or is it just the predators? They're actually the, our locker rooms that our folks will see the benefit from. The only time the predators see the benefit from this is during training camp, 
So this yes. is almost, this is 99% public benefit. Okay. Any other? Susanna, if you haven't been over there, but that ice time is used year round around the clock. It's unbelievable. I have. So it's going to be great, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. I make the motion to approve. Second. Thank you so much. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. 08-19-05, Mr. Jared Williams, representing the Harpeth Valley Utility District, requests the board to approve two permanent easements and one temporary construction easement on Metro property, parcel 142-000-21700, for installation of a new sanitary sewer, for Maine at the Harpeth Youth Soccer Association Complex in Harpeth River Park. I believe we need to defer this to acquisition. Yeah. We need to defer this one to acquisition. Okay. 08-19-06, staff requests recommendation from the board regarding initiating the petition process for removal, relocation of the private Confederate monument in Centennial Park. In Centennial Park. Is there a staff recommendation or comment? There is not a staff recommendation, but I'd like to make comments. Um, as you all may recall, back in June, the private Confederate monument in Centennial Park was vandalized. Um, and it was treated as a crime. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to find the assailant. Um, and our maintenance, uh, maintenance team did get the monument cleaned um, very quickly. So we're pleased about that. Um, since then, and even before, we had gotten inquiries and a cause of concern um, from the public about the monument um, in one regard or another um, as to um, this Confederate monument being on public property. It should, should be there. It should not be there. Um, and I did a bit of research um, myself and learned that um, the park board had never addressed it one way or the other. And, um, I need guidance from you all as to how to proceed. Um, I should mention that back in 2017, some of our staff met with local historians um, about this particular monument, a conf Confederate monument um, on public property. And while there was no definitive recommendation, um, <coughs> one um, alternative or uh, uh, one option um, that they uh, throughout was to um, add some interpretive signage to put the, the monument in context. Um, I should mention also that relocation, renaming, or removal of this monument falls under the um, Tennessee Heritage Protection Act. So it does not allow monuments on public property to be removed without approval from the State Historical Commission. Um, so I, I think I sent you that information and uh, again just need some guidance from the Parks Board as to how you wish to proceed. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or discussion from the board? So once it goes to the Historical Commission, will they recommend relocation, removal, and if so, to where? How, how does that no. body work? No. Um, it would be if the request is to relocate it. I don't think we ideally have to have um, a location set. Uh, if, the, if it's for removal, you see you have a, uh, a copy of the application of the petition in your packet. It is very involved um, and steep justification is required. Um, so I think, well, I know, um, on the application, we would have to say if we want it removed or relocated. On the question of interpretive signage for context, would that need to be a part of the motion today or is, would that be an addendum? How does that work? Well, today that was, was one on of the, the recommend that was one of the recommendations. So if there if the <coughs> if it becomes then add interpretive signage as opposed to I think today what's on the agenda is it's very broad. Monique's just looking for some, some guidance direction. from you all. Mm -hmm. for how you want to move forward. I mean, no matter what, this is going, no matter what you all decide to do, if you decide to leave it as it is, it won't have to go before the state, but right. if you decide that you want it removed or relocated, 
that has or interpretive signage does that go to or that's what I'm that's signage. the question I'm asking but that doesn't have to go before mm -hmm. the, the state mm -hmm. is there any other discussion any other questions madam chair let me ask a question yes if you is there a place to remove it within the park that would give it the safety that's needed is anybody even look since it's it, being it has been a part of um centennial park master but tim you want to speak to that with the sure. so the master plan does make some very broad general recommendations with regard to all of the monuments and relics <laughs> in the park there are three monuments or relics in the park that are associated with the civil war the confederate private monument the powder grinder wheels which are over behind the art center and the cannons that are at the top of Flagpole Hill here. Flagpole Hill was a Union fortification during the occupation of Nashville. So the hill is the, the most historically significant in association with the Civil War. So what the master plan recommends is that we bring all of those monuments and relics to the top of the hill, um, design a space, a plaza, landscaping, um, for those monuments and um, and there provide some of that that context mm -hmm. and history. And That's what's in the master plan. The master plan was completed prior to the the state legislation. Right. Required right. That. So yeah. so gotcha. so even movement to those locations, yeah. that location would require state approval. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the idea of interpretive signage for now. I'm going to be glad to make a motion to leave it as is with proper interpretive signage uh, that the staff vets <coughs> and uh, approves. But leaving it in its current location and not moving well, you, you it? Well, you have to move it. You have to go to the state. You have to go through all that is what I've just heard. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I guess the concern is that it continues to be... Um, Damaged continues to be. Well, then and how many? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, at this time in history, I hate that this is even a conversation around race, racism. Um, I understand the, the the context of history, um, but our parks department needs you know direction from us on how to 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 deal with that. There are persons on both sides we have received. Uh, comments from the public on both sides of this issue <clears throat> and we thank you for uh, being a part of that debate uh, but our parks department has to um, manage that um, and so we need to do something to protect the history to to also to um, hear the requests I guess on both sides of the issue and if if interpretive signage or movement to another park is because where it sits now is is in the open yeah and, and I, it's I, not I, i'll just say and i think the issue is it. even if i'm sorry excuse me for cutting you off i was trying to finish my thought I'm yeah sorry. no excuse me um but uh, <laughs> um i think the issue is even if it were moved which yeah. requires state approval it's still on public land i think that is for what I've heard for um, many folks who are of the opinion that it should be moved, it should not be on public land. Um, for, again, there's this state um, process, okay. and mm -hmm. I think as an alternative, um, interpretive signage um, with context um, is a sound option. Uh, that's just my, my opinion. But. Any other discussion or questions based on what you've heard? In terms of the vandalism, can you clarify how how often that has happened? Is this a, is this a recurring event? I could not. Um, for for me, that it, back in June is the first time I remember it being vandalized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, as you may recall, um, I guess back in 2017, there was heightened discussion. Uh, <coughs> national discussion about yeah. Confederate monument, and that is um, what led us to, to um, you know, convene the group that we had together to, to talk about that. At that time, there had not been vandalism, uh, but this just brought it up again, and so um, for direction for me, um, I just need some direction as to how you all 
would like to proceed. And would interpretive signage come back to this body for approval? Yes. Once someone that's that yes. committee? Yes. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All righty, I will. Um, so we have a motion? We have, we have a. You want to defer it? Maybe we should just defer it for. You want to think? Just, okay. Defer? Yeah, I think we should probably. So with the motion. I'll think through. Okay, it's to defer. All those in favor? Oh, do I need a second? second. We have a second? A second. Okay. Uh, are you seconding? You second. I need one. Um, no, I am seconding the motion to Thank defer. Because you. you're absolutely correct. I was coming back to that. <coughs> uh, all those in favor of deferral? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you so much. The motion um, passes for deferral. And is that for, how does that work? Is that for 30 day? I just want to make sure. Is that for Should it go to a committee to come back with a recommendation? That's what I think. You want to defer to a subcommittee? Mm -hmm. Just for the whole board to discuss the committee. Okay. What does so that go? Public eye. Policy. Oh, pop. Pop. Policy. I think in public eye. Policy. 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 I think it'd be public eye. Public eye. Public art. Public art. Policy. Yeah. Okay. This is being deferred to our public art uh, committee uh, for discussion, and that will be on our next agenda for next month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, George. Okay. Let's get back to where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Yes. As a matter of procedure, we did not, um, uh, we didn't formally approve the last agenda item. Um, I, I just, we, we, the, we the, didn't officially make a motion to defer the um, item no. before this one. <laughs> to the acquisitions committee. Oh. I you did. Is that correct? I apologize. No, we did not. Okay. So I'm going back to 0819-05. Mr. Jared Williams, representing the Harpeth Valley Utility D District, requests the board to approve two permanent easements and one temporary construction easement on Metro property, parcel 14200. 21700 for installation of a new sanitary sewer force main at the Harpeth Youth Soccer Association Complex in Harpeth River Park. Uh, the recommendation is to defer this yeah. to acquisition. Is there a motion? Michelle, pursuant to your all's rules, that's automatically deferred. So, oh. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. We are moving to special presentations and introductions. The Friends of Shelby Park to present their annual update to the board. Thank you so much. Okay, and if you would say your name for sure. So my name is Sarah Bronner, and I am vice president of the Friends of Shelby, the board from Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms. And thank you all very much for having us here today. Well, me. <laughs> um, our, our president, Katie Burris, is actually in flight to Norway, so she couldn't make it today, but well, I'm nice. happy to be here. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of some of the exciting activities that we are working on in the park, some of our investments, and um, also open up um, some input from the community on where we can continue to invest um, within the park. So um, as you all know, we were founded in 2008, and our mission is to help preserve, protect, and enhance Shelby Park and Bottoms. Um, we. I'm going to go through a few things and I'll go rather quickly um, and just stop on some of the high points. So our board has actually been in a bit of a transition. We have many people who are turning off our board. Um, so the executive committee is new this year. Katie Burris is our president. I am the vice president. Margaret Darby is our treasurer and Kevin Martelli is our secretary. We have um, six new board members this year, which is fantastic. So now we have four executive team members, 15 members on our board, so 19 members overall. Um, we have also started, we've switched up our committees a bit to shift um, based on a shift in our priorities. 
So we have a marketing and membership committee focused on sort of our brand and the community and revamping efforts with membership and um, community engagement. We have an events and fundraising <coughs> committee which helps maintain our uh, marquee events the, for the beneficiaries of the Nashville Hot Chicken Festival and we host four pick-in parties each year at the Cleveland Football Park. We also have a grants and park projects committee and then we also right now have a temporary committee for an executive director search. So I think that's a big announcement. I may stop on there for a moment because it's not in the rest of the presentation, but we have voted to move forward in 2018 on um, hiring a full-time executive director. And where we've partnered with the Center for Nonprofit Management to execute the search, and we're really moving forward quite rapidly now. Um, and the, the position was posted on the 8th of July. We are should complete our interviews by the end of this month, and we hope to hire someone before the end of our Cornelia Fork pick and party season, which ends in October, for those who don't know. <laughs> um, because we want them to be involved in a lot of the planning activities for 2020. So this position um, is a reflection of the great opportunities that there are, the growing and ever dense East Nashville population, and our <coughs> board's interest in really having someone be a full-time advocate dedicated to our mission, to really expand the work in the community that we serve, um, and with businesses that we hope to engage, to really be able to make some bigger and broader investments within the park. Um, so we do host um, a variety of events each year. Most of them, they're, they're sort of split between fundraising and community engagement, and community engagement, education, service towards the park. So um, we have Cornelia Fort pick and parties, which bring in quite a bit of revenue for us. Um, I think last year was in about $15,000. So those have been really great for us, a nice way to also have people see Friends of Shelby. Um, again, the Hot Chicken Festival, we are the beneficiary of that, we're very involved. And quite a few of our board members are also on the board for that festival. And then we've done some really great community events this year. So thanks to the Rosebank neighbors, they did a great cleanup effort. Um, we hosted a community beautification day and did some mulching by Lake Sevier. Um, and we've also started to build out some more partnerships with other local organizations, including the Golden Pheasant Triathlon with Cumberland Kayak and Walk Bike Nashville. And we've also been <coughs> involved in um, Night Out Against Crime. And I think the other exciting things that are happening, we have launched a campaign for a specialty license plate. So we are making inroads on that. It was launched at the Tomato Arts Fest last, Tomato Arts Festival last year. Um, and it, the Tomato Arts is coming up again this Saturday, so if you all wanna come to the neighborhood, um, you're invited. Um, but we are about a quarter of our way through our efforts um, in getting the thousand pre-orders that are required in order to, for it to move into production. This license plate, again, is an opportunity to increase visibility for Friends of Shelby. Um, and for those who may or may not be aware of it, we get half of the proceeds of that pre-order. So it's a nice way to hopefully bring in some consistent revenue. We've also relaunched our membership program and also sort of a campaign called My Shelby, or My Shelby Park, which is something that we're using on social media. Um, and that falls al aligned with <coughs> other similar memberships that it's now becoming a recurring membership, that um, it's sort of that small monthly payment rather than an initial larger sum, um, and that we've done a little bit of incent um, some incentives as well, like perks to our events and a koozie or a sticker, depending on um, what people have done. And then we are, we're also, as um, you heard from our uh, committee, we are putting a bit of focus on grants. And we also hope that this executive director will have some experience with 
grants so that we can continue to get some additional funds. Um, we did uh, work with Parks, I believe, on pursuing a grant with Historic Nashville um, to analyze the historic concrete in the park. Um, we didn't obtain that grant for 2019, but it sort of opened our eyes to the potential for continuing to do that. And concrete paving um, and some of the infrastructure are some things that are areas of focus for us. Um, the other thing is we're working with the Nature Center to identify areas for tree plantings. Um, and we're going to be submitting a grant to Root Nashville. And then we have been awarded a clean water grant from Aveda. And so we have not determined how we're going to use that yet, but exciting opportunities there. Um, and then the Nature Center has been a fantastic partner for us. We are really lucky to work with such great people at the Nature Center, and we are committed to investing in the work that they're doing too. Um, we've changed our format a little bit and are giving them an annual discretionary fund, and so they can determine what activities they want to spend that on. This year, they've so far, they've spent it on um, crash deterring window treatments because there was an issue with the birds, yeah. um, some dimmable <laughs> boardwalk lights, a broadcast seed spreader, a beekeeping suit because we continue to grow in Shelby Park. A lot of our um, beehives and there's a couple different places within the park that we have that. Um, and then we also fund a portion of their continuing education. And by the way, I do have to point out because she's my favorite, in case you didn't know, the person in the far right corner is in her 90s, and her name is Miss Marilyn, and she volunteers every week at the Nature Center. And she's posing with, you, can't, you cannot see it, a um, nat junior naturalist coloring book that Friends of Shelby helps support. Um, and then I, I'm going to, I'm trying to be mindful of time here, but I'm almost done. Um, so I think some of the other exciting things that we're doing are other volunteer partner projects and investments. Um, in 2018, we invested $14,000 into the park. Um, some of that was with a water fountain that was also had a dog bowl that dogs could enjoy as well. Um, and this year, to date, we have invested $31,000. A good portion of that is for a playground that is coming to the Cornelia Fort Air Park. So the Cornelia Fort Air Park really has become a great place within Shelby Park where a lot of people convene and do a variety of activities and there's already some gym and exercise equipment down there and this will be right next to that. Um, we are still working on doing, on securing storage in Hangar 1 of, um, there's been some break-ins and so we're moving forward on getting that secured. Um, we do provide funds to the East Nashville Little League to help support their activities and getting kids out and playing activities. Um, and then we also are looking towards more of these long-term kind of capital campaign projects, and that's another place where the executive director will come in to sort of help us mobilize to get some of these funds. We're also thinking towards other opportunities for um, private investments as well. Um, and those sort of longer term campaigns are a boardwalk over Lake Severe, which has been postponed until some of the street mitigation happens. Um, the community has identified other needs, including um, Davidson Street pedestrian improvements, um, and then even things like murals on down at Cornelia Fort. So I think the other thing that I just wanted to close with, um, first of all, you know about the executive director, so before next year, we will be pleased to introduce you to our executive director, but um, he or she will be giving this presentation <laughs> next year. Um, and we are, we really did just want to note that the park is a fantastic resource in East Nashville. Um, it's large, it's beautiful, we've got a, a lot of people in the community who really use it as their backyard. We really refer to it as the community's backyard. And with that, and sort of 
the increasingly dense East Nashville, it's getting a lot of use, which is excellent, um, but also something that there are going to continue to be some additional infrastructure needs, um, particularly paving and concrete. Um, and so we just, those are things that we are, we are looking towards. Um, the other thing is we are also thinking about the master plan because the master plan for Shelby Park was done, I think, about 10 years, what? 10 years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. And I don't even think Cornelio was in the master plan at the time, so there's opportunities to update that and also that an updated master plan would then reflect some of the current needs and um, things there. Um, and then we're also getting some interest from some individuals in pursuing fundraising efforts specifically for the Naval Reserve Center, which currently is sitting um, empty. So, and then in terms of the other things the community really cares about is the bridge, um, the bridge that's closed. We've got quite a, a few cyclists in our community that um, are really eager to reopen the bridge on the Shadow Lane connection. Believe me, we have <laughs> heard from them. <laughs> we all have. Then we all have. We are. We are all on board. So um, I'm happy to take any questions, but really just wanted to give you all a quick view of everything <coughs> we're doing, and really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for that great presentation. I have some questions about the Nature Center and the um, the staffing of that. Is that provided by oh, the, you mentioned a volunteer? Is that is, is that volunteer driven or is it provided by the friends? Uh, the Nature staff is park staff. Park staff. Okay. Yeah. The Nature Center is park staff. She is a volunteer at the Nature Center. She is not a Friends of Shelby volunteer, but. I just like her. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, 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 the, the reason I asked is it has to do with funding and um, and how you know parks interplays with the friends groups, and so I just wanted to get clarification on the staffing piece. And the na I personally have loved that nature center, so it's been a great resource for my family. Thank you. Yes. You know, on the, on the Greenway, there's so much evasive plants. You can't see the river when you're walking, especially in the summer. I wish we could. It's a shame because it's stuffy in there because there's no air, but. It would be so nice to be able to see the river while you're walking down that greenway. Footnote. Footnote. No. I, if there are any more, aren't any more, I have a question. Yes. I think it's probably an easy one, or maybe not. Maybe a bit <coughs> controversial. <coughs> Is the tomato a fruit or a vegetable? <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> Depending on who you are. I believe that it is. Okay, this is not on the record. Um, I, I believe it is technically a fruit, but I am not a horticulturalist. Horticulturalist okay. would be someone who can answer that accurately. Okay, <laughs> okay. I just thought but, I would ask. Um, it's a fruit. But yeah, we also are also beneficiaries in some ways of the Tomato Arts Fest, so we get some funding um, from the sponsorship for that. So really, shall we, you know, Friends of Shelby and Shelby Park really kind of reaches all space sort of between Madison and Five Points and even beyond for people who really enjoy um, all the activities there. So. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much for your time. All right, thank the, you so much. The Friends of Fort Negley to present their annual update to the board. I feel really good about this presentation, but now I'm worried about vegetable identity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For Monique. Um, <laughs> my name is Chris Cotton, and I am the president of the board of the Friends of Fort Negley. I'm only the second president uh, of the Friends of Fort Negley board. Um, many of you know Clay <coughs> Bailey, and I, I am trying to step into some really big shoes. Um, and as a lawyer, I don't know how to do uh, PowerPoints, so you're just going to probably have to listen. But I am self-aware enough to start my timer, so I don't talk Ooh, enough. I appreciate that. You are so welcome. Um, again, my name is Chris Cotton. Uh, we, uh, as the Friends of Fort Negley, are a 20-person board that was started in 2014. And... Um, 
on behalf of myself and the board, we just want to thank you for allowing us to come today and just share with you kind of where we've been the past year and, um, and where we're going. Um, first of all, we want to thank you, the Park Board uh, Chair, Dr. Steele, immediate past chair, George Anderson, who we've worked with quite a bit, um, and the rest of the board members. Thank you for your service to the community. Um, as a member of the Metro Historic Commission, I know um, the commitment it takes to serve on a Metro board. And, and so personally, I thank you. And thank you for your commitment to green space and to the preservation of history. To the Parks Department, we work with so many great folks there from Director Monique Odom, Jim Hester, Bill Troop, the maintenance staff who's out and takes such good care of us out of the park. Um, we're so appreciative of what they do. And to our true boots on the ground, um, Tracy Harris and Krista Castillo, who staff the Visitor Center at Fort Nagley Park. Uh, a huge thank you to them, to the work they do. I, they go so far above and beyond um, just their daily requirements of their job. They, so, they know so much about that park and they care so much about that park. So I just wanted to put in um, a great word for them and just on the record say thank you to them and to everyone um, to add parks. Our mission statement says, the Friends of Fort Negley supports education and <coughs> preservation programs and advocates for the protection of green space at Fort Negley Park. So I'm gonna kind of break down where we've been, where, where we're going into those uh, categories. Advocacy clearly has been um, a great part of, of what we've done in the past couple of years. Um, it's been an interesting couple of years for mm -hmm. Fort Negley Park. And you can take what has happened there, and I think only look at it in one way. And we, we look at it as an excellent opportunity to um, show people what a special place it is. Not just to our city and our region and our country, but internationally. Um, the result, I think, of the advocacy done by us and by so many others is that people are now more aware of what an amazing historic resource we have in that park, and the part it has played in um, the history of our country and, and quite frankly the world. And with that, I would say one of the biggest things we've worked on the past year and that we celebrated back in May uh, was the designation by the United Nations. The UNESCO designation um, as a site of memory as part of uh, UNESCO's slave route project. Um, it was conferred on May, May 21st of 2019. Monique was there, George was there, a lot of folks were there, the mayor, and um, this is something we can all be proud of. We are certainly proud of it. As a friends group, the Parks Board should be proud, the department should be proud. Uh, it's one of 24, only 24 World Heritage Sites in the United States, and only four on the slave route. So again, um, something we should be proud of. It came about as a result of a partnership uh, between the NAACP and the Friends of Fort Negley. Uh, we prepared the application, the very long and extensive application, um, with the help of Dr. Angela Sutton from Vanderbilt and with the financial support of at-large council member uh, John Cooper. And this quote uh, from UNESCO, I think, uh, says a lot about Fort Negley in the park. <clears throat> Remnants of an often hidden past, memorial sites, monuments, and places linked to the slave trade and slavery bear tangible witness to that history and provide Ah, gotta get emotional. <clears throat> and provide a memorial itinerary in the regions and countries marked by that tragedy. Um, this is a special thing. And um, it is a special honor and burden we have to understand, interpret, and recognize what took place at that site. And so please know that we feel the gravity of that and want to constantly live up to that and work with you to live up to that. Uh, beyond advocacy, we work on education um, through the creation of interpretive panels that go within the park. Uh, recently, we completed a panel called the Birthplace of Freedom. Uh, it should be installed, hopefully, we're working with the Parks Department in the next few weeks, and it honors the site as a birthplace of freedom for so many escaping slavery uh, during the Civil War and the times immediately after. 
we partnered with Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt was a sponsor of the panel and um, worked with them and with Parks in its creation. What we do as well, we work on tours, guided walking tours of the park. We help sponsor school programs and field trips. This year, hopefully thousands of students will get to come through the park for free and uh, be led by Friends of Fort Negley uh, volunteers. We have a great program called Fossil Finders. It's the second Saturday of every month, led by Dr. Molly Miller from Vanderbilt and Dr. Greg Smith. Uh, we have fossil hunting, not in the park itself, but we have material donated mm -hmm. from the Vulcan Materials Company. And they educate folks about geology. Uh, it's not just a park about history. Um, it's not just a park about uh, green space. It's a park about geology. It can teach us about geology. And, um, and if you ever want to know more, just ask Dr. Molly Miller. We also participate in the Wedgwood Houston Art Crawl. Uh, we decided to do this not because we're necessarily a, 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 a traditional stop on an on art crawl, but just to engage the local community and to hopefully bring a new generation of folks in to the visitor center to learn more about um, what we do there. We've had a art installation for the past several months called 17 Men, which if you've not seen it, is just uh, an amazing installation. A artist did sketches of a, uh, a company of a colored troupe from the Civil War and um, based off of the only extant that we're aware of, um, photographs and scrapbook, if you will, in basic terms, of uh, a colored troupe from the Civil War. It's striking. You walk in that room and um, it speaks to you. So if you haven't been by, um, please do. We're obviously, fundraising is a big part of what we do. In the past year, we've brought in approximately $45,000 uh, in, in grants and in direct fundraising. Our main fundraiser is the Taste of Wedgwood Houston, where we get several restaurants in the neighborhood to come in and, uh, and provide food and drink and show off what uh, the neighborhood we uh, reside in can do. And it's September 24th if you'd like to come. Uh, we work on grants um, from various historical nonprofits. Um, we've been the recipient of a PREDS grant two years running to help with our uh, geology program. And uh, Vanderbilt has also been very generous to us. These funds are used for educational programs. We helped fund the cultural landscape survey of Fort Negley Park, which should be out any day now. Um, you've probably all seen versions, but I hear the final version should be out soon. One thing we're working on right now, we're working with Tim Walker and the Metro Historic Commission to raise uh, $65,000 for the cost of what is essentially phase two of that project, which entails um, archeological research of the site. We, I just talked to Tim yesterday, we're at about $45,000. And we just received a $30,000 grant I cannot remember from whom, but um, that leaves us about $20,000 to go in the next couple of months. So we're going to be working to try and raise that money. Checks can be made payable to the Friends of Fort Negley in the signature line, just put archaeology, and we'll make sure it gets there. Uh, we are also funding a new native landscape to improve the look of the visitor center and working with Davidson County Master Gardeners on that project. Where are we headed? Um, we want to continue to advocate, obviously, for the park. Um, I, along with Clay Bailey, are on the uh, Fort Negley Advisory Board, chaired by George Anderson and Kix Brooks, to explore what will happen at the park. We are beyond excited um, to work with the Parks Department to support that effort in any way we can. And I, we're just so excited to see what goes there. And so um, as we move through the master planning process, any way we can support that, we are certainly excited to do. Um, Obviously, we hope to continue to uh, raise money for our existing programs and look for more opportunities to do interpretive panel installations so that um, folks who visit the site can understand more. We would love to eventually see the visitor center open in longer hours, and so um, that is a goal we would like to help work towards. Um, also, we're in a great position there to have uh, relationships with the City Cemetery and with the Adventure Science Center. 
I've met with Steve, the director of the Venture Science Center. I also sit on the board of the City Cemetery. And we together are <clears throat> looking for opportunities to uh, expand our impact on that neighborhood together. It's just, it's just too good to be true that we're all located uh, in such a vibrant emerging neighborhood. And so we want to explore that. Um, in closing, just I want to say thank you. Oh, and Janet, thank you for putting up with <laughs> getting us where we need to go as well. Um, we look forward to part, uh, partnering with the Parks Department, the Parks Board, um, and just seeing what the next phase of Fort Negley is. I think we, uh, we have a great opportunity to make this one of uh, a site, not just that has huge impact on our city, but uh, regionally and internationally as well. So thank you, thank you for your time, and thank you for your dedication, and thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Is there, are there <coughs> any questions uh, for Mr. Oh, Patton? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, any questions, sorry. Uh, I want to thank you and Clay for all y'all done. A lot of us together have been through a journey to save that park, and thankfully we did from development, and uh, I think you know, the city will look back in 100 years and, and be grateful for that. But I think thank you. All of us working together, you know, through this master planning long process, we understand we're going to do it right. But to have that green space in town and save it is just amazing. Thank you. You know, I would add Reservoir Park too to your yes. list of connectivity mm -hmm. in that area. You know, with the city cemetery, there's a huge opportunity there. Absolutely, and Rose so, Park and the parks in Edge Hill. Yeah. I think we uh, we do, and, and I and think I, we lose sight of the UNESCO um, designation. How big that really is. I mean, it's huge. And uh, we need to promote that a little bit more, I think. So, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions yes. for Mr. Cotton? Thank you so much for hey, your time. Thank you very we much. appreciate you. Uh, moving to capital projects update with Tim Nitsch. Okay. Nitsch. I'll, I'll just mention um, changes since uh, <coughs> last month. Centennial Park Master Plan Phase 2, the construction team has finally Ooh. mobilized Ooh. on the site. Mm -hmm. So they're putting up, putting up fencing. <laughs> Right now, what's that? I said, wow. Yeah. Oh, God, it's right. good. I felt like this day would never come. One point of information in case you guys are asked about it, the Confederate private monument is within the boundaries of that phase two zone. So it will be inside the fenced zone, but there are no changes. Currently, there are no changes planned to the monument itself as part of this phase two project. Thank you. Um, a new project uh, at Orchard Bend Pavilion and Swings, that's the, the um, uh, soccer complex that we completed earlier this year and there was some, there was a balance uh, in funding on that that we are now able to spend on Pavilion and Swings. So that construction um, should start this month. Um, at Shelby Bottoms, the Cornelia Fort Playground, which Friends has generously provided some supplemental funding on, construction should also start on that this month. And uh, at Smith Springs Park, again, some, some uh, uh, remaining funds from the community center project are allowing us to move forward on a swing <coughs> civilian project there. Um, each of you has a nice little brochure that just came out from City Parks Alliance that has uh, Cumberland River and Riverfront, uh, Cumberland Park and Riverfront Park featured in it. So just wanted to make sure that you all had that. And in the packet that you have from me, it includes uh, some information on a uh, trailhead at Mill Ridge Park mm -hmm. that George had requested last month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that you all have that Daryl Hawks with Friends of Mill Ridge Park is the one that that um, that uh, pulled together this information from Collier Engineering. So we're continuing to communicate with him about um, about the possibility of launching that as a standalone project, um, separate from the Phase One project that we're currently in design phase on on the other side of Old Victory Park. So what's the timeline on that? Because this is currently unfunded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? So back to this, uh, I want to make sure that we're not, we can accelerate the usage of that wonderful land out there and I just sit back for a year or two. So if we can figure out something to help Mill Ridge would be great. Any other updates? No. This, yeah, we, and Daryl, well, just, just to add in, in response to that, I think, Daryl, you were able to, you got this last week. So we can, we'll have some follow-up conversations. For next meeting, that'd be great. Right. 
Let's put that on the agenda if we can. Upcoming special activities and events, Jackie Jones. Yes, ma'am. I have the news you can use for <laughs> August. Uh, as you know, school has started back. And I think it's really a tribute to our special events department, our uh, community center staff. We had 10 parks or 10 community centers participate in back to school events. And it was so extensive, I wanted to sort of list it on the back of your sheet. But you can see that uh, Bardo Garden Park, Southeast Park, Hadley Park, Bardo, uh, Watkins Park, South Inglewood Park, Morgan, Coleman, E.S. Rose, all of those parks and centers uh, participated in the back to school bashes for the kids. So uh, kudos to our special events division and our community center staff for connecting parks with communities. Um, you will note that on August 17th at 11 o'clock, we will have the ribbon cutting and celebration for Red Caboose Park. Uh, the mayor will be in attendance at that event, and we hope we will see you guys there as well. Um, Miss Casey, when she was here earlier today, she mentioned the women's suffrage uh, monument movement. Uh, our director will be doing the welcoming remarks for the Tennessee Equality uh, Day, uh, their recognition, that is, of the Tennessee Equality, Equality Day. That event begins at 11 a.m. One thing that, well, two things, actually, I want to call to your attention before I conclude. If you'll notice at the top, we have a series of events that are ongoing. And if you haven't been to either the big band dances, the brown uh, bag lunch concerts, jazz on the Cumberland, the full moon picnic parties at either Panilla Fort or at uh, Percy Warner, I strongly encourage you to try to make it out. Uh, particularly the big band dances, they are so fun. And the attendance, uh, it's got to be one of our most popular events. One of the things that I want to tell you about before I conclude that I am really excited about it, I hope you guys will be as well. Uh, on Friday, August 16th at 10 a.m. at the Elizabeth Senior Center, we will have a birthday celebration for one of our patrons who turns 100 years old. Her name is Miss Lily Bolton. She was born August 19, 1919. Wow. And she is the last surviving members of her five brothers and sisters. Uh, she ran a beauty shop behind her home for more than 30 years. Uh, according to this, Miss <laughs> Lily loves to sing songs of the spirit. She likes to eat candy, and she attributes no drinking or smoking and treating other people right as the reason that she's still here. So if you have the opportunity, please come out and help us celebrate her 100th birthday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Jackie? Thank you so much. Any department updates? No. All righty. Report of the director. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, the staff has been working uh, very hard at developing or determining which of our um, vacant positions will be uh, used to satisfy our salary savings targets again for this year. Our, our savings target is one million sixty five thousand dollars and as I have shared with you in the past the way that uh, our department is able to meet that target is to hold positions that's approximately um, 87 positions it is uh, quite an impact on our department which is already uh, understaffed and underfunded um, most of those positions are in the community centers and revenue producing um, divisions although they span the entire department um, our uh, community recreation division finished uh, successfully the, the summer enrichment camps last week um, and have started working toward, well started yesterday I, I guess, with the after school programming um, and want to thank them uh, for all that they have done in keeping our young people safe and uh, occupied in a positive way um, this year. Um, you all, I hope you have on your calendar, um, August 28th from 8.30 to 12, 
We'll be doing a tour of some Metro Parks facilities. I'm excited about that. Uh, what we realized is, and hope you're open to it, is that this will be the first in a series because can, we can't possibly get to everything, but uh, we have some, um, some locations uh, targeted that we think it's important that you see. Uh, many of you have been to those locations, but it's always good to visit. And then we are planning to have our next, uh, probably our September um, Parks Board meeting at a satellite site. So we'll keep you abreast of that and, and confirm um, that location. Demolition of Greer Stadium is complete. Uh, we're still waiting for the final inspection for, great, for the grading permit and stormwater pollution protection plan. So that's exciting to see that. Um, that uh, old facility finally come down. I want to thank the maintenance division for all their hard work in leading that project and everybody who was involved um, in um, making sure it became um, park space and it will be active very soon. Um, the repair of Bridge 5 in Shelby, as uh, Friends of Shelby Park mentioned earlier, uh, scheduled to begin in September. So we're hopeful that that will move forward um, quickly. Uh, and I, that is all I have for, um, for my report. All right, thank you so much. We're moving to announcements, requests for future agenda items and open items. I would need the uh, board to, to possibly look at that September 3rd meeting date. That's the day after Memorial, Labor, Labor. Day. Labor Day. And so I needed to know if uh, that date is okay, if we need to consider moving it to the following week. What's, what's this? September 3rd. Move it from that day, you said? Yes. Do we need to consider moving from the 3rd if you want? Look at your calendars. Third works Are you me. in town? 3rd works for me. It works for me. It works, so we will keep our meeting for September 3rd. Uh, are there any other? Announcements, requests for future agenda items or open items? No. All righty, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh.